In the previous video we talked about principal component analysis and we approached it from a maximum variation point of view. Now in this video we will revisit PCA but now approaching it from a minimal reconstruction error point of view. So now we're going to approach uh, PCA via this minimal reconstruction error viewpoint and the in, in the end I will show that it actually leads to uh, the same technique, the same principal component analysis technique as we saw in the maximum variation formulation. Uh, but I think it's important to also get familiar with this reconstruction error viewpoint. Because if you look at, at modern latent variable uh, models like uh, that are nowadays typically based on neural networks or deep neural networks architectures, these are highly uh, non-linear and they're typically uh, trained or optimized by minimizing such type of uh, loss functions. So the idea is as follows. So we have our true data point and we have a generated data point which is generated from some l low dimensional latent variable. So we can think of it of having this latent variable uh, set which generates this uh, approximate data point. And the set M will be uh, of lower dimension of my true data point. So I'm probably not going to exactly uh, represent my true data point, uh, but this is going to be an approximation. And we want to minimize this loss. Now, in general, such a reconstruction from a latent variable can be uh, nonlinear. Though now we will stick to the uh, linear case where we say that my uh, reconstructed point is just given by working with this basis. So we're ex so we're treating my latent variables as coefficients of a basis, and we expand it, and then we have this sort of bias or offset term, which we will derive to be uh, the mean over all my data points. So this x n has its own uh, latent representation, which is of lower dimension. So this is the reconstruction model that we're going to assume, where we call this ZN can be called uh, the latent variable. Uh, actually, it here represents the basis uh, coefficients. And then this UM will be uh, the basis. And it's going to be a basis of size RD by M. Right, so if um, if I have m of such uh, basis coefficients, I can use it to reconstruct uh, my true data points, my d-dimensional uh, data points, and my latent variables are then indeed uh, m-dimensional. So that's how how I'm going to model this, and this is kind of similar as what we've been doing in the previous video, right? Because uh, before, let me write it down. Before we focused on this embedding, right? On the embedding set is um transpose xn. So we were really trying, we were really looking for this projection uh, onto a particular set of uh, factors, onto this basis via this matrix um of my data points. And that would give me, uh, let's say, my latent embedding. And this latent variable, we wanted to have maximum variance. Now we approach it slightly differently. Uh, we're going to say, um, we are dealing with these latent variables and this basis. And now these latent variables together with this basis should lead to uh, an approximation or a reconstruction that closely resembles the original data point. Okay, and the idea is then that uh, maybe originally I work with, well, the usual basis, let's denote it with E1 and E2 in this two-dimensional setting. And if I were to have a vector, let's say uh, 1, 2, it would be a point uh, somewhere over here, right? It has value one on this axis and two on this axis. And similar to what we've been doing in the previous video, uh, we will uh, look for a new basis. Let's call it U1, U2. And expressed in this basis, we have of course a different uh, set of uh, coefficients, which represent uh, my vector. So my vector can be thought of as V um, is let's say alpha one times u one plus alpha two times u two, where um, this is alpha one, the component along the direction u uh, one and alpha two is uh, this component. Now this describes a change of basis, right? So we're now going to express my vector in terms of this new basis. Uh, but remember that the point of principal component analysis was the dimensionality reduction. So actually we're looking uh, for a basis, a lower dimensional basis, uh, by which I could still approximate my, my vectors uh, as close as possible. So this vector uh, V uh, 
maybe we are going to rep represent it only with this first uh, basis vector, which gives me uh, this point over here. And if I do that, then of course, yeah, I'm going to make this error. Uh, so now I want to choose my basis, um, well, as good as possible as to minimize uh, this particular error. Okay, so that's described over here. So we're going to express my data points in, in this new basis. So these are my basis vectors and these are the corresponding uh, coefficients uh, that allow me to reconstruct my original data point. Now, these, uh, this orthonormal, this isn't assumed to be an orthonormal basis, which means that the inner product between all these uh, different uh, basis vectors is only one if I take the inner product uh, with itself. And that also implies that the length of these vectors are uh, of unit length. Then the coefficients, so these coefficients are simply obtained by taking this inner product or the scalar product of my original vector with this particular basis. And this is really a uh, property of orthonormal basis. Because in general, if I just pick an arbitrary basis, the, we won't have this property, but now we, we are dealing with this. So we say that the UJs are orthonormal, and then these coefficients are simply obtained by taking the scalar product. So in terms of this new basis, then my data points are simply represented by the following formula, where these are all these uh, coefficients, well, and these are my, my basis vectors. And if I indeed work with D uh, of such uh, basis vectors, so I have a complete basis, I can always represent my data point in such a way, in, in, in express in now in this new basis. So this is just a change of basis and I can always do that. But now our objective is to work with the lower dimensional basis. So I'm only considering, let's say, the first M of such basis vectors. And I want to choose them in such a way that I still have an accurate uh, reconstruction. So the first M coefficients will represent my uh, latent variables. So these are really data dependent. So each data point has its own set of latent variables that represent this data point in a lower dimension. And then we have this shared uh, offset component. So the remaining basis functions just get some, some coefficient that is uh, shared for all data points. All right, so that's our objective to find such uh, basis vectors and these uh, components that make sure that in the end I can make such a uh, data point specific reconstruction using these latent variables. And as said, we're going to do this by minimizing the error that I make, right? So this is my original data point. This is my uh, approximated data point via this latent representation. Um, so let's take a look at what this error looks like. So this is xn and this is my approximated xn. Now we see that these, uh, these two vectors are the same for, for the first m terms, right? So these are the same expressions. I'm subtracting them. And this one runs from i as one to m. So uh, the first m terms uh, will cancel. Okay, that's essentially this, this first step. And then of course, um, so now we're only considering sums from m plus one to d, because that's the only thing that remains. And then we see then we can merge these two sums. So that's done in this step. And that gives me the following expression for um, this difference vector. So this difference is really determined uh, via this particular uh, expression. Okay, now our objective is to minimize this, right? So we are considering, considering this minimal reconstruction error uh, viewpoint. So this is really the loss uh, that we're minimizing. So if we substitute what we found in the previous slide, then essentially this is what we have to look at and this is what we have to minimize. So we follow the same strategy as always. So this is the error that we want to minimize. Um, and we want to find the parameters that uh, minimize this thing. So what we do, we take the derivative, we set the derivative of this thing with respect to the parameter that we optimize to zero and then solve it. And if we do this uh, for uh, my bi coefficients, then it turns out that these bi's are simply obtained from uh, my average data point. And now I'm not going to do this uh, derivation here in this video, it's actually not too hard, but it makes sense, right? So these bi's were not uh, specific to any data point. So they are shared for each uh, data point n. So if I then want to set these coefficients in such a way as to minimize this quadratic error for each of these data points, yeah, then of course it makes sense to, to choose this to be the coefficients uh, obtained uh, from uh, my average data point.
Okay, so you can show that this is indeed the case. And then uh, these are my uh, BI's uh, substituted in my expression for, uh, well, the error that I want to minimize. So now what's left is minimize this particular thing for uh, all, the, all the U ones, so all these basis uh, factors. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to write out this term and we start off by expanding uh, the square over here. So um, yeah, this step is really uh, expand the square. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these uh, sums up front. I can do that, right? Because these are all just linear uh, operations. And let's focus on this transpose. That's going to be the next step. Um, so we first of all observe that what you see over here is just a scalar, right? So this is scalar and this is a vector. So the transpose of this expression really boils down to taking the transpose of this vector. And that gives me, um, well, uh, this one over here. Okay, and then we observe that this, the scalar product u i u j is going to be zero for all i unequal to j, right? Because that was the whole property of my uh, orthonormal basis. So my basis factors are all orthonormal. And so that also means that the scalar product is only one if u is equal to j. So that basically means that I can get rid of this uh, entire sum. Okay, and uh, the, next thing I, the next thing I'm doing is changing the order of these uh, two vectors, right? Because recall, I can take A transpose B is the same as uh, B transpose A. And that gives me, so uh, if you may change this particular order, that will give me this thing, right? So now, it, now I reformulate it into something that we recognize as the covariance matrix over here, right? If you take the sum over all these data points. So in the end, the expression that we're going to minimize is going to be this particular thing where this S is my uh, covariance matrix. And now it's starting to look a lot like we derived in uh, the, the, the maximum variance case, right? So this is what we just derived. So this is the, the, the loss or the error that we want to minimize. And it turns out that it boils down to minimizing this particular term for uh, basically the, the, the discarded basis functions. And similar as before, so we still haven't found these basis functions actually, right? That's still, uh, we, we have to minimize this thing. Uh, so it's, it still is a minimization problem, but now it's still under this constraint that uh, ui, the norm of ui is equal to one. So we're going to do this, uh, well, again, via the method of Lagrangian multipliers. And this then similarly, as we have seen before, uh, results to the case that I'm actually solving this eigen system such that these basis uh, vectors are essentially my eigen vectors and these are my eigen values. So that also means if we just then substitute over here, then we get that we actually minimize. So from m plus one to d, these lambda i's. So this u i s u i represented my variance along this uh, i basis component, right? And it was essentially summarized via this uh, eigenvalue. So this tells us that the minimal error uh, reconstruction or the minimal reconstruction error formulation really boils down to minimizing the variance of my discarded basis, right? Because we want to minimize this thing, right? So the sum of all these lambda i should be as small as possible. So that essentially means we're looking for the largest eigenvectors and eigenvalues such that the remaining d and minus m are the smallest because essentially we want to expand this thing in the, the largest eigenvectors. Okay, great. So we saw that this minimum reconstruction error formulation nicely corresponds with the uh, maximum projected variance uh, formulation. But in some cases, it's actually more intuitive to approach this from a minimal reconstruction error. And that is more so the case when you talk about compression, right? Because we want to be able, so now, okay, now let's consider compression. So we have this uh, digit that we want to compress. So we want to uh, summarize this particular image with only a couple of, of uh, latent variables. So that's essentially what we've been discussing in this video, right? So we want to re represent this digit with a couple of latent variables, uh, which can be used to expand in this, this basis. And then we have the shared um, mean or offset uh, parameter. So when I look at the eigenvectors, these are really the images that uh, express most variation among the different digits. So uh, if I compare the five, the one and the eight, 
the difference is mostly explained via these type of regions and we can sort them into well a decreasing order of importance for this uh, uh, variation and that we, and then what we do in this video we're going to represent my image in terms of these eigenvectors via this reconstruction formula and then we see if we only compute only use the first 10 eigenvectors I can roughly represent my images. It's super blurry, but if you look closely, you can still figure out this maybe a five and one and a three. Uh, oh, well, that's actually an eight. So, okay, we make errors here. So in order to come up with a proper reconstruction, we need more of such eigenvectors. Um, so yeah, if we take 50 of such eigenvectors, uh, now we can actually identify the digits more clearly and we go up to 200 eigenvectors, we have a very clear representation, a very good reconstruction of my images. So this tells me that these images, they, they are high dimensional, right? I think they were 28 by 28, so that's, let's say, 700 pixels. And I'm now able to represent these same images with only 200 of such coefficients uh, without any loss of detail. So, so that means there is a lot of redundancy in my pixel basis uh, representation. And this also means we can highly compress our images using this uh, latent uh, representation. And this also holds for images in general, right? So this is actually one of the first uh, examples I covered in this course um, when I talked about applications of machine learning. So also these images can be compressed because there's this common structure that can be shared. Uh, so again here, if we look at all these images and compute the eigenvalues, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors over my entire database, then it turns out uh, that the most descriptive features are ordered as follows, right? So first of all, uh, differences between the images can be explained by maybe looking at images that slightly look to the right, this one looks a bit to the left, and then uh, most variation among those images uh, is obtained by looking at the smile, some people smile, some people don't, and then uh, there's more and more subtle, uh, subtle differences between these images captured by these uh, lower level uh, eigenvectors. So in this context, and that's what we covered today, we were looking for this latent representation of, so this is me, of my face over here uh, with some latent variable, right? So meaning I can explain my face with just these latent components, let's say uh, these eigenfaces. Okay, so this is another example of compression, where really we have these high dimensional images, they consist of thousands of pixels, but in the end, the content the content in itself can really nicely describe with, with just 150 of such uh, latent variables. Uh, some encoding for smiles, some encoding for, I don't know, how the eyes look and uh, things like that. So we have all these variables which maybe you can give them an interpretation, but in essence, my images live on this lower dimensional uh, uh, manifold of latent variables.